welcome back in this video we are going to learn about three specific functions they are range pretty and cut these three functions will be very useful for our future videos so let's dive right into it so let's set the seed to a random number I choose 100 here and create a vector that follows Poisson distribution So this will create 100 vectors, sorry, 100 numbers with a mean of 6 units. So that's the vector. To get the range for this, you do a range function, within it feed the vector. So this gives the minimum value and the maximum value. The minimum value is the first value which can be accessed like this and maximum value as this as enclosing two within square brackets I need range function because it goes as one of the parameters for my cut function I'll show you what I mean in a bit so these are the breakpoints that we will be feeding into the cut function so what is what does cut function do let me illustrate that too so this is the cut function which takes this specific Poisson vector as its first or first argument and the second argument is the breakpoints we created like we did here so what it has done is it has replaced every element with the interval it belongs to so here instead of 5 it has put the interval it belongs to it does the same for all the elements here so that is what cut does in the event that you don't want to create your breakpoints yourself there's a pretty function for that that is called pretty itself it goes some something like this There you go. Instead of having these many breakpoints, pretty creates the breakpoints on its own. So what exactly did pretty of this specific command gave? It gave the breakpoints here itself. In case your vector got large, like you had thousand numbers with a mean of around fifty, it gave this but if this is not good enough for you you can have another argument that defines the number of breakpoints you want to have say if you want to have 15 breakpoints pretty will generate 15 breakpoints for you so that's what this is so have this in the back of your mind while we jump into the next section which will be about creating contingency tables